uh, hi friends we are going to see september month yojana 2022 title jammu and kashmir and ladakh in that the three topics which you are going to see is counter terrorism scenario in jammu and kashmir ushering investments bridging the digital divide these are the three topics we are going to see so that first one is regarding counter terrorism and scenario in jammu and kashmir and we know jammu and kashmir is right now a union territory after removing article 370 and right now jammu and kashmir has one of the biggest problem with compared with the rest of india or rest of the states in india that is problem of terrorism so we'll see some certain information based on it and what are the scenario of terrorism in jammu and kashmir and how government is responding for it so that we'll go for page 1 that is paragraph 1 and what paragraph 1 says is so paragraph 1 says about the beauty of jammu and kashmir it's most uh, you know the jammu and kashmir is located in himalayan ecosystem and it's known for its natural beauty so natural beauty and right now jammu and kashmir is part of union territory so this was recently done by a government and uh, one of the biggest problem affecting jammu and kashmir that's given there problems affecting jammu and kashmir first one is regarding cross border terrorism cross border terrorism so this cross border terrorism refers about uh, our neighboring hostile neighbor or our neighboring country pakistan where it uh, encourages india uh to oppose india through means of terrorism and uh, that is the reason for this cross border terrorism so we know we have a problem with in uh, pakistan right from our independence so that uh, that has creates its own set of problems and pakistan is using terrorism as a tool to uh, influence india and especially to disturb india and uh, in jammu and kashmir very particularly so that is given one is cross border uh, terrorism and next one is separatist violence what is separate is violence is apart from cross border terrorist entering india there are people within jammu and kashmir who doesn't want to be part of india and there are section of population jammu and kashmir who even doesn't want to be in pakistan so they they have the separatist mindset they want to create a separate country or uh, especially they want to move out of india so that is the uh, second uh, second type of uh, problems in jammu and kashmir and also armed militancy armed militancy these are all local grown with the support of uh, uh, our hostile neighbor so armed militancy is another problem in jammu and kashmir so they say that uh, in 1990s uh, 1990s was the decade where terrorism was at the peak in jammu and kashmir so that decade saw the high, uh, peak of jammu and kashmir one of the reason is uh, after 1990s we know that um, us broke down and uh, afghanistan issue started correct and uh, that all has an impact on uh, uh, yeah, jammu and kashmir militancy because weapons are freely available and uh, those terrorist or what they call it as mujahideen trained in afghanistan to fight against uh, conventional army so with that uh, knowledge and with the easy availability of uh, weapon they began to concentrate on uh, jammu and kashmir part so that was the reason why in 1990s uh, we can see that uh, militancy was very high in jammu and kashmir okay and next page page, page paragraph 1 paragraph 2 3 4 five, 6 so in paragraph 1 so they say about what are the current practice of uh, india to contain jammu and kashmir so they have say kinetic operations so kinetic operation is done by india which primarily focused on uh, targeting targeting terrorist sympathizers so there will be few power population who will be always supporting terrorism so 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 they are being targeted by the government and humanitarian justice or 
So, humanitarian gestures. What is humanitarian gestures which includes the, the time of disasters where Indian Army helping the hands to the locals and uh, making health and education available uh, to the local population which is not uh, possible in most, mostly ter territories where we have a problem of terrorism. So, the all, this all human, humanitarian gestures which creates goodwill for the country and proactively co uh, countering anti-India propaganda to counter anti-India propaganda. So, right now we can see that uh, especially after the emergence of social media, we can see that a lot of fake news is are being passed especially in Jammu and Kashmir to create false information about India and its establishments and to counter that right now government is also working on. This is all, all coming part of this kinetic operations of government and uh, this kinetic operations which includes army as a, ma a major uh, uh, lead role along with this other measures being taken. And paragraph 2. So, right now in Ka Kashmir Valley we can see that uh, they have said terrorist, uh, terrorism has reduced a lot and they have given some numbers for that. So, in 1990s when the peak of uh, terrorism or militancy, so the, there were uh, thousands of uh, thousands of terrorists operating in those areas. Right now, as per the recent data, it has around 163. So, current data is for the year of uh, 2022 you can take. So, our establishment says, our military says we have one, 163 active terrorists. This clearly shows the sharp decline in numbers of uh, terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir, which indicates greater improvement of law and order situation in Jammu and Kashmir, which acts as a catalyst for development. Whenever a society is peace and stable, automatically development will further in that particular society. This number clearly indicates that uh, terrorism is going down in Jammu and Kashmir, acting as a ground for development. Okay. And in paragraph 3, they have listed out some local terrorist organizations. So, uh, there are three terrorist organizations which are prominent in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Popularly, we call it as LET, that is Lashkari Toiba, Jaishi Muhammad, Jaishi Muhammad, and Hezbul Mujahideen. So, these are the three most active terrorist organization and also most uh, well organized and uh, networked terrorist organizations in Jammu and Kashmir which is always in the spotlight of our Indian establishments. Okay. And paragraph 4, and in the entire uh, uh, Jammu and Kashmir, where we have the uh, greatest presence of uh, terrorism is, uh, in paragraph 4 they say South Kashmir, so South Kashmir is known for terrorism and one of the major reason for the thing is better network, better network for terrorists and organizational support. So, organizational support. All this acts as a reason for South uh, Kashmir becoming the hotbed of terrorism. And another most important thing is uh, Pakistani support. So, Pakistan support for terrorism, how they are providing support that is given in paragraph 5. So, what they say is uh, especially in LOC. That is line of control which is being accepted by, by both India and uh, Pakistan in Jammu and Kashmir. So, what the parag paragraph says is until LOC there are army vehicles to transport terrorists. So, mostly terrorists are trained inside Pakistan and uh, there are training camps for them and they are being transported very close to LOC by army vehicles and also identifying inf infiltration routes. This is all done by Pakistan, identifying infiltration routes and uh, providing covering cover fire. So, providing cover fire is nothing but to keep our Indian Army engaged uh, with Pakistan Army through this uh, firing, most uh, systematically fired, especially uh, to support this infiltration. So, that is called for provi providing fire cover firing and also communication devices providing. modern communication devices so that terrorists can get uh, communicate with their handlers especially in Pakistani side. So, based on their instructions they can work in India. So, that is the thing what uh, uh, Pakistan is doing especially in India and also so they also found out some uh, tunnels being 
dug by terrorists to reach on Indian sites. So, tunnels for example, 400 meters from Pakistani site to Indian site, especially in Samba district. So, these are some facts which clearly shows that uh, how desperate uh, terrorists are there to enter India and to destabilize uh, uh, India, especially in Jammu and Kashmir. And whereas this paragraph 6 says, so what are the measures being taken and uh, there are three major forces involved in countering terrorism. So, one is on the front side of it, that is uh, the first tier. So, first tier is always army and second tier is CRPF. It is a central police force especially trained for uh, counter terrorism operations and third tier is JNK police. JK police. So, they are being uh, used to counter terrorism and also we have this anti infiltration obstacle systems and fencings anti-infiltration obstacle systems, so which primarily focus on drones, night vision cameras, so night vision uh, surveillance or uh, cameras, thermal imaging. So, these are used by Indian establishment especially by the three, three forces uh, to stop infiltration. So, that is given in this page which clearly shows that Indian government is take all the countermeasures to stop uh, terrorism and especially through especially cross border terrorism. And paragraph 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, in paragraph 1, so until June that is from June 2022. So, there are uh, 3 infiltration attempts, 5 infiltration attempts and uh, and uh, five infiltration attempts in this uh, three terrorists entered India so another terrorist are being killed by uh, Indian forces so this clearly shows the success rate of uh, Indian forces and it becomes very effective of uh, controlling cross-border uh, terrorism whereas paragraph 2 speaks about uh, so, right now we have this uh, ecosystem, terrorism ecosystem. So, terrorism ecosystem. So, to terrorism to thrive, it is not based only based on uh, 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 Mujahideen's are terrorists entering India. So, there should be always a support system for that in Jammu and Kashmir. There should be certain people or organizations supporting on backside. So, that is also being taken can by Indian establishments, especially by army. So, they have identified this. Uh, so, o overground workers, they are called as overground workers. So, mostly they are responsible for providing intelligence for terrorists and uh, especially military movements or uh, CRPF movements are being uh, given by these workers to the terrorists and uh, establishments, locations all being given by them, all come under this overground workers. That is also being monitored by our government. And also they have this uh, Jaishi Islami and which acts as sympathizers for this ter terrorist organizations is another name. So, not Jaish, it is Jamaat e Islami. So, so, so they are acting as a sympathizers. So, they are called as front organizations. So, they are called as front organizations. So, in the, in the name of uh, religious organization providing uh, well-being for the people, but in background they are the organizations who are trying to support terrorism. So, that is going to be a, a paragraph 2. So, paragraph 3. So, right now we have uh, national investigative agencies and uh, they are primarily focused on investigation of investigation of uh, terror crimes, inve investigation of terror crimes. And they are mostly actively involved in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, and uh, so they are primarily focused on also terror finance also, focusing on terror finance, and and also in Ministry of Home Affairs, there is terror monitoring group, terror monitoring group, who actively monitors uh, 
terrorism and their presence in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. And this being uh, uh, the terror monitoring group consists of officials from NIA, CBI, IB, and JK Police, Jammu and Kashmir Police. And also we have uh, officials from uh, Central Board of Direct Taxes and Central Board of Indirect Taxes. So they also help in identifying the terror modules and uh, and police organizations helps to identify how they train, what are the modus operandi of them, how they try to work on. Whereas uh, Central Board of Direct Taxes identify how the money is being funded for these activities. So that we have this in Ministry of Home Affairs Terror Monitoring Group. Okay, that is given in page uh, paragraph three. So paragraph paragraph four. So we can see that uh, regarding terrorism control, Indian government is focusing on this two-pronged strategy. What is two-pronged strategy means? Uh, trying to eliminate active militants and uh, especially uh, infiltrators who come to India to create trouble in Indian system, especially Jammu and Kashmir. The other other strategy is uh, to win the hearts of the people. So that is given in paragraph four. So especially uh, outreach programs are being done. So outreach programs are being done, uh, and it said that 80 families of active militants in uh, uh, Kashmir's Shofian. So to shun the path of violence, and uh, they'll get, they'll show the opportunities available for them. And mostly they are being misguided. Uh, lo local populations entering into terrorism, they are being uh, misguided. So Indian establishments are trying to reach their families. Outreach program, especially for the families, family members so that they can convince the youths not to enter in terrorism. Next paragraph, next page, paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraph 3 and paragraph 4. So in paragraph 1, so uh, the factors for uh, entering into terrorism being, being said. So why people enter into terrorism especially in Jammu and Kashmir. So first and foremost thing is radicalization. So so radicalization. So this was systematically done and uh, people are being radicalized on the name of religion. So radicalization. Uh, next thing is peer pressure. Because a friends join terrorist organization or a family members join terrorist organization, that, that puts a peer pressure on them to be part of that organizations and victimhood, some victimhood feeling. So sometimes people feel if they lost the members uh, uh, due to uh, any of the uh, terrorist related incidents or uh, Indian Army operations, there will be some collateral damages and uh, so simple to say that wrong person at wrong time. So this normally happens in war zones and especially in uh, sec high security risk areas. So this creates victimhood feeling. So that also propels them to join this uh, terrorist organization and self radicalization. Self radicalization and uh, especially that is based on Wahhabi. This is one part of uh, Islam which recommends for uh, violence. So and also there is another one called Salafi. So Wahhabi and Salafis, uh, this is one form of uh, uh, Islamic propaganda which tries to make, uh, make people to move towards uh, violent means. And uh, recently the another most important thing is uh, cyberspace is used for this, cyberspace for uh, uh, radicalization and uh, especially they use this dark web, social media. for promoting terrorism. Okay, this is given in paragraph 1. So paragraph 2, so Indian Army has an initiative called Sahi Rasta. This you can use it in your answer writing. So in this initiative, what Indian Army is promoting is uh, Army promotes sports, sports or uh, training programs training programs, tools to open up the minds of the people, skill development. So Indian Army is showing the various opportunities available for the people of Jammu and Kashmir through this initiative, Sahi Rasta initiative. This you can use it in your answer writing. What are the measures taken in India? Not only to counter terrorism through force, government is also 
thinking of all other possible opportunities so that Jammu and Kashmir can be integrated with India. And paragraph 3 and, uh, and there is a term called uh, hybrid terrorist, hybrid terrorist. So, in Jammu and Kashmir who are these hybrid terrorists are uh, these are first time people involving in terrorism and mostly they are sympathizers without any criminal records. So, ultimately the uh, army or CRPF does not have the basic information about the people involving it. So, they are called as hybrid terrorists. So, uh, mostly terrorist sympathizers and uh, and mostly the person doing the terrorism for the first time. So, they are called under hy hybrid terrorists. This is another category of terrorists emerging in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. And apart from this in Jammu and Kashmir also they have this uh, virtual terrorist groups. These are the new uh, areas of uh, terrorism. So, virtual terrorist groups. So, like Jammu and Kashmir, so Gastnavi force or resistance force, so resistance force, they are nothing but uh, the names of different organizations given, but primarily these are the organizations designed by uh, already existing three terrorist organizations like uh, uh, Lashkari Toiba or uh, Hizbul Mujahideen. So, they are giving the different names for it. And uh, right now, intelligence is also being strengthened to monitor all these things. Intelligence strengthened by CRPF, JK Police to monitor this virtual terrorist organizations. And so, next we go for paragraph 1, paragraph 2. In paragraph 1, so Pakistan is using right now the cyberspace to create false narrative. So, because of this uh, weaponization of information right now uh, Pakistan is uh, clearly knows that they cannot oppose Indian army conventionally and also they understood that terrorism is also not working in Jammu and Kashmir because India is very highly effective in controlling terrorism through multi-prone multi strategies. So, Pakistan is right now using the cyberspace and uh, creating a false narrative about India and especially Indian security forces among Jammu and Kashmir and across the world. This we call as weaponization of information. So, they want to create a uh, wrong information among the Jammu and Kashmir people and the rest of the world. Uh, right now, to counter that, so army is, uh, so Indian army, so Indian army is Srinagar based. Chinar crops, crops implementing a counter response and uh, so they are also focusing on this dimension of uh, Pakistan's initiative countermeasures to avoid this false narrative. Okay, so this is in regarding this uh, first news article. Second is regarding assuring investments. So, right now Jammu and Kashmir so, it has a huge potential for development. So, investment need to be concentrated there. So, regarding that news article, so page paragraph 1, paragraph 2. So, in paragraph 1, so there are some facts being given about Jammu and Kashmir. So, so Jammu and Kashmir's previous state affairs are being discussed here. So, government expenditure in 2018-19 was 57 percentage of total gross state gross domestic product. So, simply to say that uh, in 2018-19 that is state gross state domestic product, gross state like GDP for a nation we have a for state gross state domestic product. What is gross state domestic product means within the state boundaries. What is the economic value for goods and services and as per 2018-19 this gross state, state domestic product is primarily focused on 57 percentage, 57 percentage of that comes from government expenditure. So, what we need to understand is Jammu and Kashmir economy is entirely driven based on government expenditure which is not good for a system where uh, private initiatives need to be there. So, it will be more sustainable when compared with government focusing on lot of its expenditures 
and uh, this clearly shows that uh, there is lack of investments and lack of private players. One of the primary reason is what we saw in the previous news article regarding terrorism presence and all. So what 2018-19 data says is about the gross uh, state domestic product, 57 percentage government expenditure and mostly funded by central government. Funded by central government. So which clearly indicates that even state governments does not have the financial ability to spend the money. So they entirely depends upon central government for uh, their uh, economic life. So that is what the uh, paragraph 1 says and paragraph 2. So, paragraph 2 also gives some data and the total receipts of Jammu and Kashmir about 40 percentage comes uh, came from center and ma a massive government workforce approximately 5 lakh employees ensure that over a quarter of its total receipts were consumed by salaries and pensions. So, what we need to understand is when you say receipts means you can say about uh, money or revenue 40 percentage comes from central government. comes from central government and they have 5 lakh employees in state government of Jammu and Kashmir, employees in Jammu and Kashmir state and they are going to consume around uh, quarter. So, around 25 percentage is spent as salaries and pensions. And please understand in any economies there is a term called capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. So, capital expenditures are related to creation of infrastructures which will result in furthering the economy. Example construction of a port or a road network this all comes under capital expenditure which is always good for the economy. So, it results in further development of the economy. But if you say revenue expenditure it is more related with uh, recurring expenditures which does not have a direct contribution to the economy like salaries for employees. Right now we can see Jammu and Kashmir around 25 percentage is going as a salary which is not a good thing to indicate. So, we, we can see that infrastructures development is also lacking. There. So, so that is given there and even they have a compa comparison of uh, two uh, Himalayan states. One is Jammu and Kashmir another is uh, Himachal Pradesh that per capita net state, G, uh, state domestic product is 94,000. So, per capita net state domestic product for Jammu and Kashmir is around 94,000. So, to say that uh, every people in Jammu and Kashmir is contributing around 94,000 rupees to Jammu and Kashmir economy whereas, if we take this Himachal Pradesh it is around 176,000 which clearly indicates that uh, there is a greater development in Himachal Pradesh both belong to the same region both are Himalayan ecosystems, but we can see one state's contribution is very less when compared with other states GDP. So, that is what it clearly indicates and uh, road density another most important thing is regarding road density. So, do road density is another important indicator of development and uh, which is less than okay, that is one fifth of Himachal Pradesh. So, assume that if there is uh, 5 roads in Himachal Pradesh, there is only 1 road in uh, Jammu and Kashmir equivalent. So, 1 fifth of Himachal Pradesh uh, road density what uh, uh, Jammu and Kashmir got. So, this clearly says the poor infrastructure development also hydel power is not being exploited. As we know that Jammu and Kashmir is located in Himalayan ecosystem, it is a mountainous area, potential for hydel power is very large, but it is not being exploited when compared with Himachal Pradesh. So, this data clearly shows that uh, development is missing in Jammu and Kashmir. In paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraph 3, paragraph 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, in paragraph 1, so paragraph 1 which says what are the natural disadvantage for Jammu and Kashmir. So, Jammu and Kashmir's disadvantages uh, cost involved in it. So, cost cost involved and majorly it is related to transportation cost. So, any products if you want to take it to Jammu and Kashmir, it is mountainous area, the cost will be always high because of transportation costs are very high. For example, if you want to create an infrastructure, the project cost 
for example in punjab 1 lakh rupees means because of transportation cost there will be a higher expenditures need to be done jammu and kashmir in mountainous areas we want to spend lot of money to take the raw materials to the site so that is what they have given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 which says that as the cost is very high for jammu and kashmir to run the economy of jammu and kashmir policy makers in this article what they says policy makers need to focus on so focus on goods and services which belong to the niche areas so so as the transportation cost will be very high for jammu and kashmir so niche areas or segments so if you want to promote the jammu and kashmir economy the conventional products and services will not stand in competitive market because cost will be comparatively high because transportation cost is involved in it so to offset that what the policy makers need to think is there are certain products or services which are very unique to jammu and kashmir where you cannot enjoy those from other parts of india or other parts of the world where you can go for a premium price of it and uh, that should be promoted so for the, to uh, compensate this cost of transportation that was the uh, article says and uh, for that uh, jammu and kashmir both ample measures could serve as a springboard in efforts to transform the <coughs> economy so so what are those aspects are uh, so they have identified in paragraph 3 so what are those type of commodities or products or services which has a unique advantages uh, one is high quality low volume products high quality low volume products so they have given examples like walnut saffron and saffron of jammu and kashmir is global famous and uh, it's also very uh, lucrative uh, uh, spices which can be sold for premium prices so what uh, the article says is policy makers need to take this into consideration to promote jammu and kashmir economy because it's high quality low volume where premium price can also be said because it's a niche area so in entire india saffron is majorly come from jammu and kashmir and demand for that is very high in our market and across the world also especially in arab countries so that should be used and uh, and also they are known for this uh, unique handlooms unique handloom products of jammu and kashmir and also <coughs> tourist potentials are very high so tourism potentials are very high so this can <coughs> this can be a greatest advantage for promoting jammu and kashmir economy one is depending upon some unique products and also exploiting the tourism potential of jammu and kashmir we, we already saw that jammu and kashmir is located in a yeah, scenic beauty area of himalayan ecosystems uh, where people will be ready to spend money to uh, uh, enjoy the uh, himalayan ecosystems so that potentials can also be exploited so that is given in that uh, paragraph 3 as paragraph 4 so paragraph 4 says about this jammu and kashmir industrial policy so apart from this uh, jammu and kashmir also creating an industrial policy by 2021 to 2030 so for 10 years they have given industrial policy and primarily focused on investments so investment to promote the industrial growth so that is also there so so jammu and kashmir government is also interested on promoting industries even they created a policy for it that is given there and whereas in paragraph 5 so so investment growth and employment and uh, so they need to focus on mostly highly labor intensive industries so which can provide employment opportunities for every jammu and kashmir people and uh, they have identified few areas one is as discussed tourism uh, next thing is uh, handicrafts which already jammu and kashmir is known for it horticulture horticulture so this has a great potential uh, for it <coughs> and also they can focus on it it enabled services and health services low hanging fruits in jammu and kashmir economy is uh, 
you want to uh, just leapfrog Jammu and Kashmir economy uh, to the next level, low hanging fruits or which can be easily exploited right now for Jammu and Kashmir is one is tourism and handicrafts and horticulture. So, they, they have the potential to generate a lot of revenue for Jammu and Kashmir. That is good in paragraph 5 and paragraph 6. So, paragraph 6 uh, focus on this uh, service industries. So, they are going to focus on service industries to promote Jammu and Kashmir economy around uh, 53 percentage of JNK economy is dominated by services and uh, most as discussed previously it can be health services or tourism, tourism and uh, especially film tourism is another most important potential of Jammu and Kashmir. So, that is given paragraph 6 and paragraph 7. So, we will go for the next page for it. Paragraph 1, paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. So, in paragraph 1, so they say that uh, they are going to promote uh, tourism again a major focus of it and uh, so cultural tourism can also be promoted that is given there cultural tourism that is uh, Sufi festivals are very famous in Jammu and Kashmir which can be promoted especially in Islamic world. So, Sufi, uh, Sufi festivals and uh, tourist villages can be related here and rural tourism so can also be promoted. So, rural, uh, rural tourism is another potential for Jammu and Kashmir that is going paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So, they focus on uh, horticulture potential for uh, Jammu and Kashmir is very high. So, horticulture is regarding uh, growing flowers which has a global market and uh, horticulture is very high and orchards. So, horticultures, orchards, orcharding is one as part of this horticulture and cash crops, aromatic plants. So, all this can be promoted which has a potential to generate a lot of revenue for Jammu and Kashmir and also international collaborations can be done. So, international collaborations especially to develop Jammu and Kashmir and Jammu and Kashmir and UAE has close relationship. So, investments of UAE can use to build the potentials of Jammu and Kashmir. So, that is given in this paragraph 3. So, this is regarding second uh, news article. So, what are the potentials for Jammu and Kashmir's investments? Next, bridging the digital divide, third article. So, paragraph 1, paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. So, in paragraph 1, so, directorate of school education, Jammu home classes was being created especially during this pandemic. That is nothing but Jammu and Kashmir is using modern technology to reach the children. So, especially use of digital means. So, that is initiative is Directorate of Directorate of School Education, School Education, Jammu Home Classes. So, this is a recent initiative in Jammu and Kashmir, especially during pandemic to reach uh, school children. So, that is given in uh, to reach school children. And paragraph 2 speaks about, so right now they have used all the more social media platforms, social media platforms like Google Meet, Zoom, Facebook, WhatsApp, Telegram. So, Telegram uh, to reach the people. So, to reach children's. This clearly indicates that Jammu and Kashmir has effectively used technology to reach uh, children's during this pandemic situations and uh, they have uh, created this around 25,000 very precise 25,606 WhatsApp group, WhatsApp group for e-learning for e-learning in Jammu and Kashmir and uh, 
so they have also said that around uh, 10000 government schools have been connected so as paragraph 3 speaks about and also we have this directorate of school education jammu's home assignment so this is also another initiative in jammu and kashmir where students are being engaged students engagement is being done engaged in learning process especially by means of technology so that is another one and in that they have listed said that around 10 lakh children have been connected next paragraph 1 2 3 4 paragraph 5 so in paragraph 1 so in jammu and kashmir they have created this saral app android app and primarily focused on all in one so all in one so this is going to connect all the various educational portals various educational portals in india are being connected through this saral app of uh, jammu and kashmir and like diksha e patsala samin e vidyadan so all are being connected and uh, especially through this one app so this has a greatest advantage for the students to get the contents from various sources so that is one important app created in jammu and kashmir and also it's able to provide the textbooks also access to textbooks because during pandemic people cannot go home especially children are not allowed to go home and uh, so to get the studies uh, it's not possible for them to get the textbooks physically so that online availability is also done through this app so that is given in paragraph 1 so paragraph 2 so they also created this uh, so adashila so is regarding a web based uh, mechanism to monitor the schools to track to monitor and track track infrastructures so track infrastructures comma teachers on the expertise so there is another initiative in jammu and kashmir school education department so to uh, monitor and track the school environment or school eco uh, ecosystem how it's functioning again use of technology is being there and paragraph 3 so this helps to identify with this particular initiative they are able to identify this uh, uh, cash, uh, scholarship details student teacher ratio student teacher ratio is being ensured that and uh, scholarship details are being ensured scholarship details and uh, so all these data is are used for proper planning by tracking and monitoring so by tracking and monitoring school education department of jammu and kashmir able to get all this data and there is, is effectively used for planning process that is given in paragraph 3 uh, and paragraph 4 so they have this initiative call samadhan so it's a online grievance system grievance is nothing but complaint system and especially regarding uh, school educations and uh, it will be uh, registered to the corresponding authorities and they have said that under this online grievance system especially for school education some data is given around 1034 grievances are being registered registered so the uh, that is the importance of samadhan and uh, next one is they have this J, jnk education hub so j jnk education hub 
So, in this they are going to use uh, it is a web based system to host the academic digital content. So, academic digital content to be hosted in this and which can be accessed by uh, students and uh, even best uh, digital academic contents are being hosted here and st students have ha access to it uh, through single portal. So, that is the importance of it and paragraph 5. So, they have this e office. So, e office of directorate is being initiated. So, e office uh, developed by NIC national informatics centers and to increase the accountability and efficiency. accountability and efficiency of JNK school education directorate school education directorate these are some of the digital initiatives in Jammu and Kashmir education which is being listed here and all these three topics uh, how effectively you can use in your mains answer writing is any questions regarding Jammu and Kashmir issues of Jammu and Kashmir we can relate all this and also what are the measures taken by government all this can be said and especially to counter terrorism what are the measures taken by Indian government army all this you can write as uh, points on it and similarly to promote Jammu and Kashmir after uh, article 370 was scrapped what are the actions taken by government for uh, uh, enhancing Jammu and Kashmir is uh, like uh, investment opportunities what are being created and how they promoting social infrastructure that is education so all these points can be discussed thank you